a Cards with Michael production. Hello, welcome back. Cards with Michael here. Today we have a little mail call, and uh, I actually have a good idea of what it is, but I'd like to open it on uh, you know camera for you guys. This is from TKOS. I've already taken off kind of the um, everything, you know, all the shipping details, just so that uh, everyone can rename, remain anonymous. But I did want to go ahead and open it while recording and just share, you know, some comments and some notes. We have an Amicant booster box and a fat pack. I don't know if you guys can see it well on the camera, um, but, and there's also an email that I got regarding this uh, mail call and that I will read right now. Hey Michael, hope that you're doing well. I know that these times have been challenging for a lot of people. I have recently been buying a bunch of cards from my favorite local game store to support them. While I was doing this, I also found out that my local game store is heavily involved in the local Big Brother Big Sister program. They have had to suspend all their normal fundraising due to quarantine, so I came up with a great idea. I wanted to get both the store and the cost some exposure because of the great experience that I had with them. I wanted to send you I want to send you a box of Ammon Kit that I got from them to open on the channel. And I will also send an Ammon Kit fat pack. For the giveaway, if you could just give the store and the cause a shout out when you do the opening, I would really appreciate it. They definitely deserve some extra attention. Let me know what you think and give up the good work of the channel. So of course I said yes to this email. I'm so happy to do this. I think, you know, as a YouTuber, it's it's really like, it's awesome to have this platform to be able to communicate with you all for you guys to, you know, check in, watch my videos, um, but I'm always happy to give back. So the game store, and I'll pop up a little logo of it, is uh, called Pops Culture Shop. It's based in Wellsboro, Pennsylvania. I've checked out the website. You know, I did a little scrolling. I didn't really see any magic related things, but there are definitely a, a bunch of, there are definitely a bunch of card games, um, board games, and just other, you know, gaming supply related stuff. So please check them out. Um, and then the other thing, of course, the other uh, shout out is Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Um, if you haven't heard of this organization, they're obviously a nonprofit, and um, the their goal is to match children with a local positive adult mentor um, from the community. And it's you know it's one of the oldest, largest, and most effective youth mentoring organizations here in the U.S. Um, I'll put some uh, information, kind of their logo. Maybe I'll pop it up over here. Uh, and yeah, with schools closed, obviously children are even in a greater need just to have a positive role model. So if you haven't heard of them, please just, you know, learn about them, learn, see if there's, you know, a nonprofit that, or an organization that you'd really like to support. Um, and if you have heard of them, awesome, because today's giveaway for the Amiket Fat Pack, all I ask you to do is write Big Brother, Big Sister, um, sorry, Big Brothers and Big Sisters, those four words in your comment and uh, upcoming, we'll do Saturday at midnight. Upcoming Saturday at midnight, we'll figure out who wins the Amicate Fat Pack. All right, without further ado, without further ado, let's go ahead and open this Amicate Booster Box. Once again, this was sponsored by TKOS, who uh, just wanted to, you know, give, give the local store a shout out, give this organization a shout out. So very, very generous of him, very, very generous of, of him. And uh, this little fun thing, there's a price tag on this. That price tag, uh, I think this was purchased a couple weeks ago. That was actually a reasonable price tag a couple weeks ago, but I think now it'd be a, it'd be a steal if you have, haven't checked Emma Kit Booster Box prices. They've been going up. And uh, I wonder if we'll be able to get a invocation, which is you know the reason why they've been going up. They're almost like little mini lottery cards. So it's a really exciting set to open. And I hope, hope we get there today. So let's see, let's see. All right, 36 booster packs. Can we do this? I'm not even used to 36 anymore. I'm so used to just cracking, I don't know, like 12, 24. But uh, let's do this. All right, I'll put this to the side. We'll start with pack one and we'll just kind of go in order. It's a whole box. I'm really excited. This is one of my favorite sets to draft. One of my favorite sets. There's so many cards that just had incidental value and um, it was also a very aggressive format so things like Gus Walker were just like all-stars the two mana two two that it can also exert itself to become a three three flying 
Like, two mana two twos don't get that type of stats. Okretra's Monument was insane. Regal Caracal, look at that. Five mana for a 3-3. Three, three. And you put two 1-1 one, one white cat creature tokens that get plus one, plus one, and have lifelink. It, it was just... It was just a powerful set. Um, it was kind of like uh, Wizards Turning Point where they started making sets that just were more and more powerful for like the limited environment, and I had a great time. I had a great time drafting. All right, well, let's keep going. I think what we'll do is we'll put the uncommons here and uh, a bunch of commons. We'll just keep it a big pile over here. All right, that was only pack one. We still have 35 more packs. Let's go, let's go. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Oh yeah, Hieroglyphic Illumination, of course. Another awesome card in this format. Oh, we just passed by one of my favorites. Naga Vitalist, look at that. A little two mana, mana dork. Oh, oh. And of course, Sensor was an all-star in uh, Standard for a while. Grim Strider, Lay Claim, oh, love that card as well. And Temet, Vizier of Nak Naktamun with the Embalm. Exile this creature card from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a white... Zombie Human Cleric. I was one of the mechanics in the set, and it was just like a value set. Any creature that had embalmed, if you ever had it die where you accidentally milled it into your graveyard, or not maybe accidentally, but like intentionally, you would be able to create a creature token of it. And that just meant each creature had like two uses. It was great. It was awesome. Of course, I was only in blue-white. Um, but other, other, uh, other, what am I saying? It was not only in blue-white, um, but it was primarily in blue-white. Um, but other col colors did have their advantages as well. Hey, a little commit to memory here. That was also played a lot. Sixth Sense. Oh, look at that art. Look at that art. Instinct yields the truest insight. Look, look. She has a, you know, almost like green eyes there. What a sweet little card. What a sweet little card. Okay. All right. And we'll keep going. We'll keep going. I think we've only opened three packs. We still have 33 more. Oh my goodness. All right. I'm gonna go turbo mode now. Look at that. Look at that. What a sweet set. What a sweet set. Of course, cycling was also in this set. And a lot of cards kind of interact. Oh, this was like a bomb in that format. Look at that. Four mana for a 4 4 flying. And when it comes to the battlefield, you return to a creature to its owner's hand. Oh, this was a straight up bomb. Insult to injury. Of course, they had these uh, cool, they're not flip cards necessarily, uh, but you played one from your hand, insult, and injury could only play from your graveyard. Aftermath. Cast a spell only from your graveyard. Very, very cool. Loved it. Loved the design. Of course, they had these really cool full art lands as well. And uh, the interesting thing about them was they all had Nicol Bolas in them. It was a little ominous. Omanias, so to speak. All right. Keep going. Keep going. Here we go. All right. Boom. That's the commons. Here we have zombie. Zombie. Oh. A little Okechus Attendant with Embalm. Vizier of Tumbling Sands was, of course, made it in one of the uh, modern decks. The Pioneer, uh, sorry, the Pioneer decks. And, of course, there was also dual lands that actually had the, 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 the land types, Swamp Mountain. Of course, unfortunately, they did come into play tapped, but they did have Cycling. So, they're kind of like the Triumphs, but not as, um, not as cool three land types. But, they had two land types and only a two mana for Cycling. So, you know... It was a good set. It was such a, such a good set. And uh, I'm not surprised that the price for these packs or boxes has gone up a little. Um, the invocations, of course, are more rare and have gone up a little as well. But I think another reason why this set was just so fun was just it was a really fun set to draft. And uh, that always is a good thing. A little dual land again. All right. All right. Let's keep blitzing on by... Sweltering Suns, oh, what a great rare. Foil, Net Crop, Entangler. All the crops were like little groups. They were like graduation classes. Um, if you haven't heard about the Amiket story, basically what happened was um, the there's this world, kind of like a very Egyptian-like world, where everyone is just always training combat-wise so that they can participate in these, um, these trials. I think there might be a trial somewhere here. Uh, well, when I see a trial, I'll stop, I'll stop and, and talk about it. Um, every single, every single person was, was going through all this work to, to try to participate in these trials. Um, and all these zombies were people that passed away and they would be embalmed into these living zombies. 
uh, these white zombies, notably, that uh, basically were just kind of like servants. Um, and that was just the world. And, and the, the Gatewatch, the crew of Planeswalkers, Nyssa, um, Gideon, Jace, Liliana, they came to this world and they were just like, why is everyone, like, why is everyone so, like, why is there so much discipline? Why is everyone so orderly? And why is everyone just focused on working on these trials? Of course, the mysteries are not solved in uh, Amiket itself. They're solved later. But uh, what you learn is that um, for a while, that, that's all that these trainees, these newborns know. All they know about is to work on them, their combat martial prowess. And um, the greatest honor was basically to be uh, ritual killed in a ceremony by one of the gods on the, on the world. So what an interesting, interesting backdrop. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the lore beyond that, but that, that's kind of the world here. So you'll see a lot of people, a lot of the card art um, just shows people uh, like this guy, a uh, red crop spearmaster. They're always just training themselves. Top crop elite. And it's not just humans, of course. This is a bird warrior, an Avon, perhaps. Um, Avon initiate. It, everyone's just working on their comp. And of course, there was this it's like a safety sphere and outside of that safety sphere were the zombies and the monsters um Hazaret's monument Hazaret was one of the gods grasping dunes sandworm con convergence um this kind of shows you the life outside of the safety sphere that they had was just like this area full of monsters and worms um so yeah that was kind of the story behind Amiket um just an awesome set Egyptian themed zombies mummies and a lot of people trying to work on their combat prowess. Here's compulsory rest. So if you failed, you were just like honorarily, you know, embalmed. So kind of spooky actually. By force, Shefit monitor. Hey, our first mythic, a Nyssa, steward of elements. Of course, Nyssa was on this plane with the Gatewatch. And this is a fun interpretation of Nyssa. It's a green blue interpretation. Um, and it's also the only Planeswalker that actually has an X in their uh, casting cost. So you could cast this Nissa as just a blue-green, and it comes into play with zero counters immediately, goes to the graveyard. Sad. Um, but, you know, this Nissa never saw real amounts of play, so never was worth much. But still, pretty epic being the blue-green version. Nissa usually is only a green uh, Planeswalker, so that was very cool. That was very cool. Final reward, of course. Those who earn a glorious death are given the highest honor. They are carried on funeral barges through the gate to the afterlife. Uh, I'm not going to spoil what happens later. You can read on. Just Google it. Google the Amicate story. But uh, there is... I'll give you a little hint. All the Nicol Bolas signs do point to something more nefarious going on. And, um, you know, they don't just go to the afterlife. I'll just keep it at that, alright? Okay. Uh... We got some more, of course. Got some more packs. At this point, I've lost count, so I'm kind of just having a good time. Gate to the Afterlife. That was kind of the glorious thing. Everyone wanted to go to the Afterlife. Decimator Beetle, one of my favorite cards to draft in the set. Crocodile of the Crossing. And a General Initiate. Oh, this was actually my favorite card to open as a rare. Um, just because it was a, you know, it comes into play as a 3 4 of 3, negative 1, negative 1 counters. That was also another theme in the set. And every time you tap it, it would get stronger. And so what it did is early game, it helped you ramp into your spells that you want to play. And late game, it just became a 3-4 that you pay two mana for that helped you mana ramp. Ah, oh, this was absolutely one of my favorite cards. It was, you know, a card that I actually thought would be really good. So I bought a, a few extra copies of it, but it never really, you know, took off. It became a real expensive card. So kind of failed there, but I just thought it was so good. I was like, I want at least a play set. I want at least a play set because I bet there will be a green deck that plays it. I think it was like kind of right, but... It, you know, standard rares these days never really go beyond a buck. Like, they really have to be, like, format all-stars to be more expensive than that. On Crop Crasher, this was also a really, really good card. 3 mana for 3-2 of haste with this added clause that if it attacks, you can exert it. And if you exert it, target creature can't block. I mean, this was insane. This was, like, definitely used in the modern reg aggro decks at the time. Um, just that flexibility. Like, if your opponent doesn't have any creatures, attack with 3-2. Get three damage in. If your opponent does have creatures, attack, exert it. Now the rest of your team can attack, and your opponent's creatures can't block. They'll dispossess. Now this card was seen. You know they made this because this set followed Kaladesh, which was an artifact-based deck, and they wanted to give 
you know, tools for people that were playing in this set um, that had to play in standard to, you know, go against any type of really, really ridiculous, ridiculous artifacts. So this, this possess was made for that reason, but luckily, you know, didn't really, ha no specific artifact really, really possessed that much power. So wasn't, wasn't necessary, but it was kind of like a, a power gauge just in case. All right. I believe we're about a uh, third of the way through the box. And we'll just keep rolling. We'll just keep rolling. Oh, I'm a cat. What a pleasure. What a fun time. Thank you again, TKOS, for just sponsoring this. Flame Blade Adept, of course, was seeing play in Modern because of, uh, you know, there's a lot of cheap cards like Burning Inquiry that lets you draw three, discard three, that really let this card get pretty, pretty big, pretty, pretty fast. Um, Sacred Excavation. So this is kind of uh, one of those cards that gives you a prelude into what's going on. Um, the Anointed were basically these zombies. Uh, they worked the mines without pause. Uh, and basically they were just collecting some this rare blue gem um, called Lazotep from these mines. And no one knew why. Like no one knew exactly why they were collecting it. But they were doing it day in and day out. Trial of Zeal. Alright, so this shows the honor killing actually. So Trial of Zeal was the last trial you did. It was with the red god, Hazaret. And basically, if you performed all the trials and you were the, like the sole survivor, um, you would be basically mercy killed or ritual killed by Hazaret. And uh, here's the you know flavor text: Eternal glory awaits you, my child. And that was what everyone wanted to do. They just from the time they were born until they got to this step, that's all they wanted to do. Anything be, besides getting to this step and being ritual killed by Hazaret was basically a, a failure. And so. Hazaret's favor. Hazaret's gift is bestowed only once. This is literally, oh, what a great storyline. So this is the trial of zeal, and this is what happens to you when you have completed that trial. You are, you know, at the beginning of combat on your turn, you may attack a creature, gain plus two, plus zero, and gain haste until end of turn. If you do sacrifices at the beginning of the next end step. That's exactly what was happening. You were getting sacrificed. And, uh, you know, sounds kind of almost Mayan, you know what I mean? That type of culture. That's, I guess, what they were going for. And it was a little spooky. It was, like, you, when you were watching the storyline about Amicad, of course, the set that followed was Hour of Devastation, so... Not gonna give too many spoilers there, but Hour of Devastation was the set that followed. Um, yeah, the storyline, you knew something was up. Nicol Bolas is, of course, the prenemial, the preennial... Uh, evil guy in every single storyline so far almost in magic and uh, you knew he had a hand in something you knew he had a hand in there uh, and the land straight up just had his horns uh, showing and so if you were playing this set and you were reading the story you're like yeah I know something's up but what exactly is up no one exactly knew people started having a clue later on but at the you know in the early days it was just like set self on a draft but we know something is up we know something is up lay bare the heart Plague Belcher, little foil compelling argument. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep blistering through. Anyways, I, I'm like halfway through. I don't even know if you know these videos are that fun to watch when it's just you know straight up opening packs. But I did want to know if you've played this set before in limited. What did you think? Did you have a good time? Oh, I love this card as well. Cut to ribbons. Um, oh, that's how you pronounce these cards, by the way. These these little aftermath cards. Cut to ribbons. It's that that just what they intended. Um, what's the other flip card? Uh, let's quickly grab that so that you, you can also see that, that it, it always worked like that. I think the other one was insult to injury and commit to memory. So look at that. Insult to injury and commit to memory. That's kind of how they designed these cards. Kind of like a little um, mnemonic effect, a little word smithing effect. And I love that. I love that so much. They always try to do that, by the way, with these uh, flip cards, these, uh, these type of art cards. Um, they always have something going for them. It's either, uh, I think the other, uh, the original was, of course, one of the cards was Fire and Ice. So, oh, love that so much. Love that so much. All right, here we have an uncommon adept, Protection of the Hecma. So Hecma was the, this like, this cool magical wall that protect everyone inside from the spoopy things outside. Look, there's like zombies in there and whatnot. Oh. That was not a place you wanted to be. That was not a place. Oh, here's our, one of our gods. There were five gods on the plane. Bantu the Glorified was the black god. Of course, he had a lot of sacrifice elements. If you actually read the story, his trial uh, involved sacrifice of your own comrades. It was, it was spoopy. It was sad. Heroism. And of course, look, 
we still have Nicol Bolas' horns in every single one of these full art lands. So, that was our mythic number two. We'll keep rolling. Are we going to see an invocation? Yeah, in case you haven't seen one of those, those are kind of like the lottery cards. And they basically were these really cool Egyptian-themed hieroglyphic art cards that, uh, you know, they were alternate arts. They were very special. This was before collector packs, of course. Um, but the only issue was a lot of people couldn't read the cards. Harvest Season, cool. And um, that, that, that proved problematic because it was hard to use them in competitive play. It was like, hard to read. And that was, that was a big complaint. They wanted to go for a hieroglyphic feel, and I think they did it too well. I think they did it too well. All right, Exemplar of Strength, Stir the Sands, little dual land. All right, all right, keep going, keep going. Here we go. This, of course, is I think the only time I've opened a booster pack that wasn't in Masters or wasn't Ikoria, so this is also kind of exciting for me. Mouth to feed. Look at that, look at that. All right. Embalmer's Tool, another uncommon, Enigma Drake, Decimator Beetle, Soulscar Mage, of course this is seeing play in Modern as well, just a 1 mana, 1-2 of Prowess, already very powerful, um, but that added effect of whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage to a player, instead put that many negative 1, negative 1 counters, that kind of gave your small little red aggro deck a little bit of counterplay against creatures that were just too large for them to just straight up burn, you could at least, you know, make them, uh, shrink them a lot smaller. All right, True Heart Twins. Cast out, this was a premium removal spell in the format because it can grab anything, including Planeswalkers. And if they don't have anything, you can always cycle it just for a single white. So it's played a lot, it's played a lot. Curator of Mysteries, and sweet, keep rolling. Of course, one of the other things with this set, and with a lot of like older sets nowadays is the box itself might be sealed and worth over $100. But it's very unlikely that the cards themselves are going to be worth over $100. Unless, of course, you hit that invocation. Or you hit certain, like, foil mythics and just get lucky. Like, it's very it's very unlikely. It's very, very unlikely that you, um, you know, happen to get more value out of it than it was when it was sealed. And that's just, you know, that's just how it is these days with uh, newer... Oh, hey, another mythic here. As foretold... Whoa, I kind of put some commons in the rare pile. That's all right. Not a big deal. Um, now this card people were speculating on crazy amounts like they thought that this card would be the next thing um, Notably there are some cards in modern uh, especially time spiral where uh, They had suspend and but they were free spells. So like there was an ancestral recall uh, That had suspend and people said hey if you play this with zero time counters You can play those free spells living end for example was another one of them and uh, you know that could be a lot of value. That could generate a lot of value. The only problem was, you know, do you really want to play a three mana do nothing enchantment just to play these free spells? Hmm. Suspect. Suspect. So never really took off, but that was definitely a thing back in the day. That was definitely a thing. Renewed faith. Sandworm convergence number two. All right. We'll keep going. We'll keep going. Of course. Hopefully, you guys are sticking around because I'm hoping that we hit an invocation. That would be really sweet. Um, you know, we might not. But, hey! Our fourth mythic, Angel of Sanctions. Now this is a, a card that was not only played in Standard, but nowadays it's still played in cubes and whatnot. It's just a very powerful effect. It has that banishing text on it. Exile target non-land permanent when this enters the battlefield. And it can also embalm. So once you get rid of it, you can embalm it again. So, you know, Classic like little two for one, potentially a three for one if you, uh, if it never dies again because it's not only one creature but also another creature, so that's a two for one technically. And then a three for one is if they don't kill it, you've been able to you know kind of jail away one of their cards. All right, another brawler, vizier in a dusk to dawn. All right, foil land plus plus a fo uh, forest, cool cool. All right, okay, got like four or five packs left. And we'll wrap this video up. But so far, it's been a good time. Hopefully, you know, a lot of the stories I've been telling about Amiket have resonated with you. Because this was tech definitely one of my favorite formats. Our Fiend of Ithnir. I believe this card is actually going up in value because the cycling deck is a little bit more popular nowadays. And this is such a staple in cy cycling. And it's not just a 1-1 counter on one of your opponents. It's all the creatures your opponents control. All of your opponents. 
So, sweet card in, of course, our most valuable format nowadays, which is, you know, Commander, um, or EDH, Elder Dragon Highlander. Uh, yeah, Synchronized Strike, Nest of Scarabs, Watchers of the Dead, Prowling Serpo Prad. Oh, what a card. Prowling Serpo Pard. What a funny card. What a funny, funny card. And we got a few more packs left. All right. Battlefield Scavenger, Protection of the Heck, Ma, Trial of Knowledge, Irrigated Farmland. Okay, all right. Two more packs left. Open Onto Wonder was one of my favorite cards. It was kind of like a bomb almost. Look at that. X target creatures can't be blocked this turn until end of turn. Those creatures gain whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. If you do this for three or four creatures, you get in a ton of damage. Then you draw three or four cards. Oh, it was insane. It was an insane card. Problem, of course, is you need to have creatures in play and you need to be able to attack with impunity. Like, if you attack with three or four creatures, then they attack and they basically just kill you. Not the best play, but still. Oh! Speaking of cards that were insane, this card was the nuts in the limited format, of course. Glorybringer, five mana for a 4 4 flying haste dragon, already insane. Now, added text you may exert it as it attacks. When you do, it deals four damage target non dragon creature and opponent controls. Oh my gosh, that, that did so much work. You just pop one of their creatures and you still have a 4 4 flying. Now, it doesn't untap the next turn, that's the way exert works, but it was still such a powerful card. Such a powerful card. And Curiously enough, they did say non-dragon. What's the rationale? Because they don't want this weird thing where you play your glory bringer in, in more like standard or competitive play. Um, you attack with it, you exert it, you kill one of their creatures, then they play a glory bringer, attack, exert it, and kill your glory bringer. That was like if you read the notes, that's exactly the interaction they didn't want to happen because basically that became a stand standstill. You, if you knew they had glory bringer, you wouldn't want to be the first person to play glory bringer. So cool little factoid, of course. And we have two more packs. I miscounted. Didn't realize there was two more. Hapatra Vizier Poison. So this has become a po popular commander card um, as a commander herself. And on Foil Hazaret's Favor. Very sweet, very sweet. Hapatra, of course, um, uh, one of the reasons why she was so popular is just counters are really popular in, in commander in general. And, and she used a unique form of counters, these negative one, negative one counters. So... It's a sweet little card, it's a sweet little card. All right, the last pack. Kind of in the very bottom, so it'd be cool if this had an invocation. But hey, what a good time for a good cause. Um, as I'm closing out this last pack, just another quick shout out. Hey, last pack is a mythic. Um, big brothers, big sisters, check them out. Just go visit their website. Um, the giveaway is not related to that. I can't make the giveaway related to you, you know, donating or, or just, you know, offering any type of help for big brothers and big sisters as a national organization or even signing up to be a big brother or a big sister. Those are all things that would be amazing. Giveaway is not related to those. Uh, the giveaway is just, you know, please say big brother, big sis big brothers, big sisters with an S um, in your comment. Um, that's all I'm asking for. And of course, also a quick little shout out again to Pops Culture Shop in Wellsboro, Pennsylvania. You know, check out their website, go to their Facebook page, give them a like, give them a follow, do what you can. They are a local game store. This, of course, was a video I was aiming to get out a week or two ago um, when things were really bad. Things are still pretty bad. We're, you know, slowly states are starting to open up, but your support for these local stores, super helpful. Check out your own local store, too, if you haven't. Um, always recommend doing that and uh, with that being said, that's the video. Hope you had a good time. Cards with Michael, signing out.